What is up, guys? This is Coach Ryan from Whole Strength CrossFit, and today I want to talk to you something near and dear to my heart, how to actually accomplish things. We're going to break down how to actually take your outcome goals and turn them into behavior goals, uh, and then break that down even further into actual actionable steps that you can uh, achieve those outcome goals. So let's talk about how to define these terms just a little bit. First of all, outcome goals. Those are the easiest things to set, right? That's what we're talking about. I wanna lose 20 pounds. I wanna get a 400 pound deadlift. I want to fit into this outfit. I want to be a millionaire, right? These are, these are the things that tend to be kind of easy for people to define um, in setting those goals uh, uh, because they're the things that uh, move us uh, in an emotional way, right? And I encourage you when you're setting outcome goals to try to attach those things to a larger why because that will help you uh, stick with those outcome-based goals, right? Why do you want to try to uh, fit into that particular outfit or why do you want to get to a certain body fat percentage? What does that mean to you, right? And, um, and they have a little bit more impact than just picking things randomly or kind of without any sort of emotional anchor. Now, if we just stop with outcome-based goals, then it's not gonna be enough to allow us to actually accomplish something, right? Typically, people set those types of goals at the beginning of the new year, uh, and this is why people fall flat a lot of times when they actually come to achieving those goals, because there's some other steps that you have to accomplish that are below uh, the, the process of just the outcome-based goals. The next step, right, is identifying what we call behavior-based goals, right? So behavior-based goals are the actual steps that, require, that you will get you to the outcome-based goals. So let me explain. If you set a goal to lose 20 pounds, right, okay, you have to break that into behavior goals, right? So maybe the behavior goal is uh, I'm going to try to get to the gym three times a week and I'm going to eat more vegetables uh, and less uh, Twinkies. Uh, does anyone eat Twinkies anymore? I don't think people eat Twinkies anymore. But less candy or less sugar or less soda or whatever it is, right? Um, so those are behavior-based goals. They are the actual actions that you have to put into place to achieve that goal of losing that 20 pounds or getting into that outfit or even getting a 400-pound deadlift or a big back squat or whatever the goal is, right? So. So you break those downs into behavior-based goals. What are those things that you're going to do with your behavior to help you accomplish the outcome, right? Those things you can typically track, right? You can say, hey, did I do this or not, right? You can look back and see, did I train, how many times did I train this week, work out this week? Did I, um, you know, what did I eat this week? What did I, how much water did I drink this week? How, what time did I go to bed? What time did I wake up, right? These kinds of things, right? So. These are the behavior goals that allow you to get the outcome goals. Now, where it's, a lot of people stop, if, if they even get to that point, they stop there, right? A lot of people stop at the outcome goal, but then we get to the behavior goal, but it's still not enough. There's a couple more things that are sitting below this that will help you change that. The next part I, what I call underneath the behavior goals is what we call if-then statements, right? And so basically if-then statements are identifying those, almost like those Vices. They can, if then statements can be in the positive and they can also be in the negative. So they can be both, right? And they're basically go something like this. I use myself as an example, right? If I want to lose, uh, you know, 20 pounds uh, before I get to a battle of barbells competition, which is an outcome-based goal that I set for myself, I want to lose 20 pounds before I get to that competition, right? I know I need to train so many times a week and I need to eat a certain way. Um, and so if I do that, uh, I'll get to that goal. But my if-then statement is this, right? If I prep my food the night before, before I, before I go to bed, then... I will eat that food and I will execute on the nutrition behavior goals that I set out for myself. If I put my training time on my calendar as an appointment, I will then stick to that training time and I will accomplish that behavior goal of working out so many times per week and get to that outcome goal of competing at Battle of Barbells. That's just for me, right? Okay, it's an example, right? So if then statements take a little bit of self-reflection, self-reflection, bing, right? But um, they, uh, but they usually can be identified pretty easy, right? They can be in the negative too, right? If I 
if I stay up super late at night, then I am more likely to eat uh, Dunkin' Donuts on the way to work tomorrow, right? So they can be in the negative or in the positive, right? Um, and so, but what I want you to think about when you're watching this video is try to identify the if-then statements that um, will allow you to execute on the behavior-based goals. I think a lot of people break down here, break at this point here, and they don't accomplish their goals because they haven't identified or thought through those if-then things. If I do this, then I will be able to do this, right? And it allows me to establish the behavior goal that will get me most likely to my outcome goal. And then the fourth point of this video, right, today is that there's one more step, right, and that's practice, practice, practice. You are not going to execute 100% of the time every day of the week. It's not going to happen because guess what? You're human, right? So uh, the goal here is just to practice. And if we can get to some place where we're executing on our behavior goals using our if-then statements around 80% of the time, Right, then we're gonna probably make our outcome-based goals and get to the prog or get to the place where we wanted to set out for ourselves, right? So 80% is kind of the number that we're trying to shoot for, right? Uh, for executing, right? That means that 20% of the time, you're not gonna do it, right? You're gonna fail on certain levels and that's okay, right? Uh, practice, practice, practice. Give yourself a ton of grace, right? Forgive yourself, right? Get up the next day. Every day is a new day and try it again, right? But don't just try the same thing every day, right? Go back to your if-then statement and say, okay, hey, you know what? Like for me, if I prep my food the night before, then I will execute and I will eat that food the next day. If I fail that day, okay, the day is gone, right? If I didn't prep my food, it's harder for me to eat clean that day. Next day, that night, I'm just going to get to that, that night and I'm going to prep it again. I'm going to start all over again the next day and I'm going to execute on what I want to accomplish. So I hope you find this video helpful and uh, rock those habits. Keep up with those New Year habits. We're, we're through January. We're getting into that February, March. Where the, okay, it's like, ah, okay, I was really motivated. Now I'm starting to maybe slow down. Stick with it, right? Establish, again, behavior or outcome-based goals, behavior goals, if then statements and practice, practice, practice. I will see you in the gym soon. I hope you found this video helpful, guys. Post it in the comments uh, what your if then statement is gonna be, right? I'd love to see what everyone says um, and, uh, and hopefully we encourage one another. I'll check you out soon.